Hey everyone, and welcome back. So, at the end of the last episode, I said I thought there might be more that I needed to do to get to, uh... To... Elmac. Ermac. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, I was wrong. There is not anything else I need to do. However, there kind of is. One is that I need to uh, point out that I did have a small technical error, so there's going to be some values that are different. I'm going to have more coins, fewer weights. Um, I accidentally overwrote a save, so I've taken up or taken to backing up saves by multiple save using multiple save slots. Uh, most of them off of the main page. I accidentally overwrote my current save with my personal playthrough. I need to go, one, turn down Long Mulan a little bit more. Hopefully you guys can still hear that, but let's buy some shurikens. Uh, 35, that's going to be not nearly enough, but it'll have to do. So let's go to the Temple of the Sun. Quick uh, save here. And let's head down to Elmac. Ermac. Whatever you want to call him. And that's going to head us into a stun animation, but that's okay. So let's head down here. And start the El Elmac fight. So, this is a pretty cool little fight. Um, for those of you that have watched the or played the original or watched the original, uh, it's pretty similar. He's slightly more difficult. There's a few changes to his attack routines, and his vulnerable spot is his head as long as his mouth is open. His fireball attacks leave a permanent uh, area of damage. And you have to hit dead on. And this is a rather difficult fight without a large amount of, uh... Okay, those immediately drop off. That's what I thought. But I am probably going to lose this fight. Um... If you're having trouble with this fight, I do recommend using the gun. Um, Yep, there we go. I lost. Um, this fight is rather difficult. Uh, my game is going really slowly. Hold on. Okay, there we go. My game just didn't like that screen. So, this fight's pretty difficult, f mostly because of how the, the fight actually works, because of the, uh, the minecart mechanic. Let's go in here. Mulberk. Let's see. Ah. Now let's head on down. And I'll do, there probably will end up being a death montage of sorts. Until I finally get bored and, uh, by the bullets. And bullets cost anywhere from 350 to 400 coins to buy, and it, it gets a full set of six bullets when you do that. Wow, that was actually surprisingly easy. This is a strategy I never thought to try in my personal playthrough. And his pissy boss mode is that he starts moving faster. Well, I mean, everything starts moving faster, but that's beside the point.
That was stupid damage. Come on, give me a higher level. And we are getting, because it's going so fast, we are getting close to beating him. Oh, come on. Oh, that was stupid. Okay. I'll give it one more shot before I switch over to montage mode. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to head back and save. And of course, brilliant me, forgot to start a timer, so I don't know how long I've been recording, but it should be easy to surmise. Oops. Also, I feel I might want to point out that if uh, you do go to the left at the beginning of the fight, since you can go either left or right, uh, you will die because his stomp attack is an instant death. That stomp attack he does at the beginning is technically an attack, and as such, instant death if you fall victim to it. And that's 10 points of damage of his 45 points of health. That was all of those misses. That attack is kind of hard to uh, avoid. Okay. So I'm doing fairly good. I don't know how much damage I've actually dealt to him, but... It's at least a reasonable amount. Oh boy. Yeah, there we go. Alright, montage mode. Which just means editing work for me. So, I'll see you at all of the death attempts, or all of the deaths, or uh, finally at the successful attempt. Okay, and we're back, and we're going to do something slightly different. I'm having a bit of a problem with uh, Sakit, not Sakit, Elmac. Um... And because, or as such, I am going to head off and do a little bit more of another area. Um, I'm going to, between this episode and next, get a successful run of me doing Elmac. <sighs> Recorded for you guys, but I'm not going to drag this episode on to just being a death montage. So I'm going to do some stuff in the Twin Labyrinth. Um, you might be saying, why not Spring in the Sky? Well... That's because Spring in the Sky has got a few issues for me. Um, mostly I don't have the Scale Sphere, which you have to do more of that place to get the Scale Sphere, but that's not exactly the point. The point is that there's some stuff that I can do in here, in the tw uh, Twin Labyrinth, that will uh, be helpful. I like killing a bunch of this stuff. See what I can find. Twins were the sole survivor of the first child. The hero of the third child captured them and thus obtained the wisdom of the first child. Eh, interesting. Alright, let's head on down. Hmm. Let's do some killings. Head in here. That's not an actual place I can go into. Okay. Blank tablet. It's got nothing in it. Head on up. 
Anyone who's actually watched my uh, Let's Play of the first one remembers what the Thadong Jewel is. Aside from the greatest source of entertainment ever. You are... Dead, monkey. Dead. Alright, so let's go ahead blank tablet and try and grab the young trolls. Oh wait. It's still bats. Which counts as a puzzle solved. Triggering the bats. major things I'm looking for is to get 60, it's 50 or 60 coins, I don't remember which of the two. Beyond the skull lies the entrance to the... Alright, let's get him stabbed, let's come over here and break this. Let's head up here. Now this is an interesting room. Ah, and those who know what these bats are know where I exactly where I am. And this means that uh, I've done something only capable of doing in this area before I obtain another item. I am in the backside, something you get into fairly early on in uh, the first Lamulan of the original. But in this one, it takes a little bit more work. here. Let's head back down here. Alright, we've got almost exactly what I need to get what I'm coming down here to get. Let's head on back up. And note that that Ankh is always going to be there. It will always be those bats. Right, let's head on down this. This one takes me where I want to go. Or it doesn't. And this is going to take me back out of the zone. The problem with the Twin Labyrinth is it's a little bit confusing. Just a little bit at first. Now, I don't remember it keenly on my own, but that's okay. I can grab the, or head up this. Head over here. Head up this. This way, and this time I'm going to head up. And not do stupid things. Alright, this one I want to head down from. Alright, and I'm running low on health. That is potentially very bad. And replace potentially with is very bad. Alright, back to the front side. I'm going in giant circles. I'll be back when I get to where I need to go. Alright, we're heading back in, and this is one of those times where I feel extremely stupid. <clears throat> like, really, really stupid. About uh, where I needed to go. Is, I believe the top one. Yes, yes it is. All right, I'll purchase the helmet. Now let's teleport to Gate of Guidance. Someone you might be saying, is that all you wanted to do? Yep, that was all I wanted to do in that place. 
all I needed out of it, because this unlocks a lot of things for me. Because this means I can now traverse parts of Spring in the Sky without having to worry. <clears throat> Let's head on up and see what else Zolpot has to say. Yep, the water's poisonous. As you can see, we're losing some health as we enter it. Open the floodgate, the water will once again flow. Open the floodgates of Owens. So I'm going to quick break these. Kill some fishes. And let's head up to the top. some interesting stuff along the way. This is the aqueduct Miguel I made, but it looks like it's not working anymore. Interesting. Also, bats everywhere. All right. And the water physics in this are much, much simpler is awesome. I'll be washed away of uh, water that waterfall if only I had a helmet I pro could probably get by. And come on, bet. Come over here. And say hi. It's your old friend Lameza. And you don't say anything. Leave that be. Oh, yeah. And this nets us new sub weapon. Woohoo! Well, what is this new sub weapon? It's called the Caltrops. Blank tablet. It drops Caltrops that are a train hazard. Grab this map. The priest Onez takes the form of a fish. This land flourishes under him, and is only he may close at the floodgate. Interesting. Let's head up here. Partial floodgate, or partial tablet that it says nothing. A skeleton that says nothing. And another tablet. Heal the entire body. The, f the fairy will gently heal you. The fairy will fl help thy fight. The, ha the fairy will provide treasure. The fairy will reveal secrets. That's another one. Or that's another problem or puzzle solution, sort of. Okay. So we want to get on this. We want to head up. And not get hit by any of this stuff. Okay, and we want to keep heading up. We want to wait for that one to start coming down. That was awkward. And we want to head here. And get this, obtain the scale sphere. Sweet. This means I got what I came here to get. Okay. Now, what does the scale sphere mean for us? It means something awesome. We're not taking damage. We are now immune to the water. Or hydrochloric acid, depending on who you ask. But, with this, I'm going to warp back to the surface, and I think I'm going to call this episode here. 
So I will see you guys next time on Let's Play Alone Mulan.